Hello again, everybody, and welcome to your newest lesson from the whole team over here at FullSkillsExamPrep.com. So this is uh, the last question that you'll get for the Canada-US Safe Third Country Agreement. And hopefully by the end of this one, you'll have a better idea of what this agreement is and, of course, how it relates to your ICCRC Full Skills Exam. And, of course, uh, if you want more questions uh, about this, it's all in our materials. So again, just quickly, this agreement is for refugee claimants. So refugee claimants must request refugee protection in the first country that they go to, which is either Canada or US, unless they qualify for an exception to this agreement. These exceptions are family members, unaccompanied minors, document holders, and public interest exceptions. Okay, remember that it's important for the person to uh, meet all of the qualifications. By being exempt from uh, the third, Safe Third Country Agreement, it doesn't mean that the person is automatically accepted as a protected person. It just means that he has the opportunity to apply. Okay, remember as well, they don't accept if a person wouldn't qualify normally anyways being exempt from the safe third country agreement doesn't allow him to apply for refugee status. And moving on to your question. So here is your question. Omar moved to Ohio a few years ago and since then had been trying to find a job in the car industry. It has been very difficult for him because he had not been able to get a valid work permit in the US of course because he's in Ohio so he ended up living in the streets. One night he got into a fight and wound up killing someone else. He pleaded self-defense during his trial, but as he has a criminal history, the judge condemned him to death. During his detention, he succeeded in escaping and ran to the Canadian border. Uh, at the border, he pled for refugee status because his life is in danger in the US. So with all of this story, could he still be eligible to apply for refugee status in Canada or at the Canadian border? Okay, you probably have a good idea of the answer already, but remember it always depends on what the options are for answers. So the options we have here are yes, because he would not have been sentenced to death for this crime in Canada. Yes, because his life is in danger, both in his home country and in the US. No, because he'd be considered as a danger to the public. And no, because he's from a DCO country. If you have the test day data book, you just have to go to the DCO page and you have that answer right away uh, as to whether or not he's from a DCO country. But you have to think as well, does it really matter in this question? So the important parts here in the scenario are that he's illegally in the States, he killed someone, he received the death sentence, and because he received the death sentence, his life is in danger in the USA. Okay, so when we have that information, that important information, and we look at the question again. Now we take a look at the options that we have for answers. You're probably thinking of Article 36, of if he's inadmissible or not. So you could take a look in your ERPA to see this. Or if you don't want to spend time doing that, you could of course look at the test day data book which would take you about 20 seconds to find uh, out about his inadmissibility. All right, so one of those potential answers was yes, because he would not have been sentenced to death for his crime in Canada. So then we're looking at if he would be able to apply for refugee status in Canada because even though he killed somebody, Canada doesn't have the death penalty. 
So that's the question that they're asking here. It's important to note, of course, and remember that in the public interest exceptions, he would still be ineligible uh, because he'd be found inadmissible in Canada on the grounds of serious criminality. So he would not meet uh, the exception there. Okay, so as we can see, he does not meet uh, that criteria there. Yes, because his, his life is in danger in both the US and in Iraq. Okay, so that's not the answer either, just because he is criminally inadmissible, of course. Okay, we'll skip over C, we'll go straight to D. No, because he's from a DCO country. All right, as you know, if you look in your test day data book as well, Iraq is, of course, uh, a non-DCO. But it doesn't really make a difference in this case because he's inadmissible anyways. And in this case, would he be considered a danger to the public? That's exactly it. He killed somebody. He has a big criminal record as well. Uh, so he can't just go to the States and um, do bad things and then come up to Canada and uh, apply for refugee protection. All right, so anyways, he'd be inadmissible, of course, of serious criminality, as you can see in Article 36. If you don't, obviously during your tests, you won't have time to go through um, your ERPA, really. So I'd recommend getting your test day data book. And you just go quickly to page 10, page 14, and that will give you the complete answer. Okay, so remember, this one is a bit of a tricky one. So he would have, if he were subject to the death penalty in the States or in a third country, he may have met the exceptions, except he would be inadmissible anyways because of serious criminality. So that would override that one anyways. Okay, again, this is on your ICCRC full skills exam. It's pretty straightforward. And uh, hopefully these lessons helped you get a good idea about this topic so you can really pass your ICCRC full skills exam and join the ICCRC. As always, a big thank you on behalf of myself and the ZET and our other staff members here. Uh, we're happy to be helping you pass your ICCRC full skills exam and be sure to visit our website um, as well to keep yourself updated. All right, so thank you very much again and have a beautiful day.